All right then, gang. So now we've got all of our components created, ready to use. The first thing I'd like to do is head on over to the layout and tackle this navbar component and these two components right here, signed in links and signed out links. So let's open up this thing right here. Now, because this component is not going to have state, then this can just be a functional component instead of a class component. So first of all, let's just import React right here from React. OK, so now I'd like to create this function. I'll call it navbar and set it equal to this arrow function. Now, inside here, all we need to do is return some kind of JSX template. So we'll start that with a nav and that will have a class name of nav hyphen wrapper. And this is a materialized class. And what this is going to do is generate some kind of wrapper for a navigation for us and make it look better on the screen. We're also going to color this gray and we're going to darken it by three shades. So that means it's going to have a dark gray background, not gret, <laughs> gray. All right. So if we press tab now, we should get that nav. Now inside that we'll do another div with a class of container, again a materialized CSS class and this is just going to contain all the content inside a central column on the page. Alright, so this here is where we're going to have our logo or rather our title in the top left but also our links. Now what I'd like to do to output this link is import it from React Router DOM. So let's import that link component right here from React Router DOM. All right, so now we can use that bad boy. And inside here, we'll do a link tag. So link, and it's going to go to equal, and it's going to go to forward slash, so the home page. When someone clicks on this link, it redirects them to the home page, right? And the class name is going to be equal to brand logo. Again, a materialized CSS class, just to position this text. OK, so inside we'll say Mario plan like so and then close this off with the link tag like that. Now we need to export this down below so we can use it inside app.js because it's going to be nested all the time inside app.js. So let's export default navbar like so. All right, so now we've created this, let's go over to app.js and nest it inside this file over here. So I don't need this h1 anymore. Instead, we'll nest the navbar, but we need to import it first of all. So let's import navbar from, and it's dot forward slash to say the current directory. Then we need to go into the components directory, then into the layout folder, and then we want the navbar. All right, so now we can nest it down here. Let's say navbar like so, and we should see that now on the home page if we go over here to the browser, and we don't. And I realized the problem here is that I pasted in the wrong CDN link for materialize. So if we just take a look at the getting started page, the one you actually want is where it says CDN over here. So grab this thing and press copy then go over to index.html and where we did this thing previously, this is just referring to a local version. We didn't download it. So let's replace that link with this materialized CDN and save that. And then fingers crossed this should work. Now, if we go back to React app, that looks better. Okay. So now we have our navbar at the top and we want to display some links over on the right. Now, remember, we have these two different components over here. We have signed in links and signed out links. And ultimately, what we want to do is only show one or the other. When they're signed in, we show these links and that might have a sign out button in it and also a create project button. And then the signed out links for a user when they are signed out of the application, they might see something like a login or sign up link. So let's just create these two things right here for now and show them both. And then later on, we'll worry about the logic on how to show one or the other. So let's just copy this stuff first of all and go to signed in links. And I'm just going to paste that in because we're still using a functional component. We still need these things right here. So let's change this to signed in links over there. And we'll change this to signed in links as well. 
Now, instead of this stuff right here, we don't need the nav bar again, then we'll get rid of that. All we want to do really is output a few different links. So let's do a UL tag first of all, give this a class name of right to float those over to the right, and then an LI, and inside the LI we want a nav link this time. So instead of just a link, we'll use nav link because that way we get access to the active class when a certain link is active, when we're on that page. All right then, so let's use the nav link tag. This is gonna to go to, and then equal, and we'll say forward slash, because we don't know the actual URLs, and then close that off, like so. Okay, so later on we'll come out and we'll fill these things in, but for now we're just gonna send everything to forward slash. So what I'll do is copy this and paste it down here a few times, and when a user is signed in, what links do they wanna see? Well, they wanna see a new project link because signed in users can create a new project. They wanna see a log out link so they can log out of the application. And then finally, they wanna see some kind of little thumbnail in the top right to see who they're logged in as. This is gonna show their initials ultimately. So what I'm gonna do is give this a few different classes over here just to style it differently so it looks like a little circle, almost like an avatar or something like that. So the class name is gonna be equal to BTN, first of all, then BTN hyphen floating. These are just materialized CSS classes, then pink, and then finally, we'll lighten it by one shade like so. Okay, so now we have this nav link and this will ultimately, like I say, just display the initials. We'll do NN for NetNinja for now. So if we save that, now I'd like to import this into the nav bar and nest it down here. So let's go over here and say import, oops, not in capitals, import signed in links from dot forward slash and then it's in the same directory, so just signed in links. Okay, so now let's nest it underneath here. We'll say signed in links like so. Okay, so let's save that and see if it works. And now we get these links over here. So we get new project, log out, and this was the little circle thing I was talking about where when you're logged in, we're gonna show the initials of the logged in user over there, all right? So that's the signed in links. Let's also do the signed out links now. So again, what I'm gonna do is copy this stuff, the signed in links, and paste it in here, just so we have to change a couple of things. Now this will be called signed out links, and this will be called signed out links. And then right here, what do we want to show to signed out users? Well, only a couple of things. First of all, we want to show a link to actually sign up to the application. So we'll say sign up and then also a login link because they might already be signed up, but they need to log in. Now we don't wanna show this circle thing to logged out users because we don't know their initials, they're not logged in. So let's just save it at that. We've exported it, so now we can import it into the nav bar, much like we did with this one over here. So let's just duplicate that, change this to out, and change this to out, and then let's nest this down here, signed out links, like so, and we should see those now in the browser as well. Okay, so we see them all at the minute. And like I said, later on, we'll add in the logic so that only one set of links is shown, either these ones or these ones, dependent on the user authentication status. But for now, that's fine. We've created the nav bar. It's the first step. And in the next video, we're gonna go on to create the dashboard components.